the co-founder of Maniac Pumpkins, Chris Soria, joins us now from his studio in Brooklyn, New York. So, Chris, I would planned to carve along with you, but listen, when you come as Diana Ross to the party, you do this and you watch everyone else do the work. So let me ask you, you have carved hyper-realistic portraits. These are 3D sculptures. How did you get involved in this? Yeah, it started off, um, you know, as just another way of making art. Uh, me and my my friend Mark, um, co-founder Mark Evan, we were carving pumpkins. We've always been really into making art, and um, we found ourselves graduating from from art college and uh, juggling a number of different art jobs. And you know, we decided to uh, to carve pumpkins and. Pretty soon we had uh, requests from corporate clients wow. and we went from carving uh, 25 pumpkins a month to 50 pumpkins within a, uh, October season to hundreds and now we go through thousands of pumpkins. Thousands. Um, I know you did, you know, the cast of X-Men franchise, The New Mutants, and you've even done one, thank you so much, of me. I, I mean, does it break your heart that it doesn't live forever? I mean, it, obviously you hope that beautiful art, maybe you can hang it on your wall and it stays preserved. This does not. Does it break your heart to put that much work in it? It's actually, it's one of the things that, um, one of the aspects that we really kind of enjoy and value and um, appreciate in the art form. You know, it's not here forever. These pumpkins only last for maybe up to a week. And um, they kind of require you to enter the moment and be very present and appreciate what you're making or appreciate what you're witnessing and observing. And, you know, it's a really fun and exciting art medium to work in. I didn't realize pumpkin carving could be so deep. This is incredible. Okay, you're going to show me how to do it. You, what tools do you use? What's your specialty tool? So, you know, we use a variety of tools to do the carvings that we do. Everything from, um, you know, chisels to ribbon loops, these are usually used yeah. for other art making practices such as sculpting clay and um, working on ceramics. Do you um, sketch we, it out? Do you sketch it out on the pumpkin before going in and, and carving? I would imagine you would, right? We do and um, you know we always suggest even with a traditional jack-o-lantern, um, it always helps to sketch it out first on the pumpkin before you start carving into it. That way you're not guessing where to carve and you can really plan it out. And, um, you know, doing so with the ballpoint pen, wow. the ballpoint pen wow. can wash right off with a little scrubby and it still have makes you your pumpkin. Ever, I mean, have you ever met a pumpkin that you couldn't carve? No, no, that's a crazy question. <laughs> <laughs> I've only met pumpkins that I haven't carved, but uh, every time I see a pumpkin, all I want to do is carve it. <laughs> that's amazing. So, I, I mean, I've always wondered, and please don't tweet me about this, the difference between a pumpkin and a jack-o'-lantern. I can't mm -hmm. believe I'm 50 and I'm asking this question. <laughs> well, a pumpkin is the uh, is the fruit. Uh, pumpkins are a fruit right. that um, I knew that. that are made out of. But originally, jack o' lanterns, you know, when um, when they were created in places like Ireland, there was no pumpkins at the time, and so um, kids would carve jack o' lanterns out of things like potatoes and turnips. Oh, and it oh. wasn't until you know they brought these customs with them to the Americas that they started doing the same thing in pumpkins. Now, I, um, Chris, I once did a story on these people upstate New York who grow like ginormous gourds, ginormous pumpkins that, I mean, sell for tens of thousands of dollars. Um, I hate again to ask how much does something like this cost, but do you know like the most you've ever charged to carve something special? Um, well, you know, we have charged a whole range of, uh, of <laughs> That means more than I can afford. You know what, Chris? You don't have to answer. They say if you have to ask, you cannot afford. But I know you have a wide range of prices. They are, they are a precious item, especially since we carve everything within 24 hours of when it's needed. And, um, you know, it's because it's, you know, it has a, a lifespan. So, um, you know, but the biggest pumpkin that we've ever carved was a little over 1,900 pounds. And... The giant pumpkins are so much fun to carve. They usually take, you know, two of us carving sometimes over several days. That's we actually carve this in one day. That's um, amazing. 
Listen, I love this story because you never know, you know, when you're a kid and someone says, what do you want to do when you grow up? This is something that you cannot imagine, but now you've made it a reality. That's what I love, when you can use your imagination to have your dream job. Well, Chris, congrats on this. Thank you so much. Thanks.